And of course, use all of that to help build ammunition for where to go and look next and what sort of effort to apply leverage wise for career training as well. Which brings us all down uh, to the final second half of it. So you've got your information, you're out there, you're making yourself visible through the search process and you're searching through these various outlets that I've talked about. And then the final one, possibly the most important one, Hey friends, Cloudbart here. Are you looking for a way to maybe make a transition or a move from your existing position into information technology or into cloud computing? Or maybe you're already in the IT space and you wanna make a little change there as well? <laughs> well, you're not alone. Lots of people are always asking me, how do I get started? How do I make those changes? And how do I build those skills? And importantly, how do I build that network? Well. IT side gigs for me have been one of the big answers over the years. And that means that as I'm working my regular jobs, I'm out there digging up other opportunities where I can help somebody out, get to understand their industry and how they use information technology and get that value proposition locked down. Beyond that, it's also a great chance for me to build a network of people. And remember, they don't all have to be IT people to help you build a network. Lots of organizations, lots of friends, lots of peers are using information technology right now to drive value and solve problems for the businesses that they work for. So that means that people in your social circles, people that live in your geographical area, they could all be a part of that network. This is exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this first video, and then moving on into some of the logistics of maintaining and operating a small IT side gig side job. Remember, for me, over the years, this actually transitioned to me being able to be completely self-employed. <laughs> and now I have an interesting, huge array of network people that I can dip into on a variety of opportunities to help me stay excited about the IT world and keep working with people and developing those skills along the way. So stick with me as we jump into the world of finding clients. And then in future videos, we'll be talking a little bit more about the logistics of interviewing, talking to them, discovery, building the requirements, and of course, writing business proposals and getting those invoices out there. All of which are gonna be logistical tools that are gonna help you find side gigs, keep those side gigs, and find yourself continuing to grow in the IT space. Stick with me. Now, when we start approaching the topic of trying to find clients, I typically break the process into two different areas of focus. The first one is searching out and finding, actively pursuing other clients out there or making yourself available in a visible sort of way so the clients can find you. And then the second part of it is network. Network, 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 network. And we'll get to that here in just a few minutes. Now, at the heart of both of these processes, you're going to have to have an easy way to exchange information with a potential client or somebody who might know someone who's interested in hiring you or making you some opportunities to work with. So. First place to start, hands down, you gotta make sure that you have some information available. So for me, this was always classic, easy place to start is set up some business cards. Now friends, they don't need to have a ton of information. They don't need to have flashy pictures on them. The point is to give an easy way to contact someone. Now, of course, this assumes that you're gonna be able to reach out to people in person. So if you're gonna do this digitally, or if you're doing this locally, make sure that you have that business card available in both a digital format JPEG, PNGs that you can send in emails, uh, attach to social media opportunities, and of course, get a printed opportunity. Regional printers are a good option for you depending on where you are in the world or in the United States. I always try to support local economies, so go out there and reach out to a local printer see what they can offer you there. Many of them are gonna offer you the ability to do 500, 1,000 business cards for a pretty reasonable price. There's also websites like Vistaprint, which can help you get this work done directly online, ship you the cards as well. Consider a two-sided part of it, the first one with basic contact info, and then the back with a little tiny description of ideal types of work. Remember, keep the topics broad. If you're talking about IT consulting, network automation or network setups, or just small business technical services, those are simple, less is more, and the broader those topics are, the easier it is to make it comprehensive uh, for the types of things that you wanna do. And remember, when you first get started in the IT world uh, and you're trying to generate this clientele, you never really know where that work is gonna take you. You may end up working for a business, a school, a church, or some other organization nearby, and you wanna keep those opportunities broad. Along those lines, make sure that the information that you're presenting uh, is non-specific enough and not too, uh, not too super personalized. <laughs> you don't wanna scare people away with anything that might uh, cause them to be concerned about the way that you might present yourself. So keep it simple, keep it professional. And remember, at a bare minimum, should have a phone number that they can uh, contact you at if that's a preferred uh, way of doing it. Have your email address on there. And then if you happen to have the second form of info contact, like a website or even a LinkedIn profile, put those URLs on there. 
Which brings me down to the second part of it, and that would be having some sort of a web presence. Now, again, folks, I want you to start off simple here. Don't get yourself buried into the minutia of creating some crazy cool website. <laughs> Heck, even just having a LinkedIn profile is a good place to start. The point is people should be able to easily find your site identify contact information about you, identify some of the basic services, really basically the same things that your business card has. Um, and then of course, ways that they can reach out to you uh, and maybe just pictures of yourself, some kind of basic understanding. As your catalog grows, consider adding publications or other recent achievements on there. But again, keep it simple. Don't get it too cluttered. And remember that a lot of this information contact overlaps with one another. What I put on my business card is the basic info that I need on my website. It's also the basic info that I needed on my LinkedIn site as well. Beyond that, on your website, consider a short informative biography about yourself, a little bio information, just to give some background about where you are. If you have some educational background to list or the region that you're working in, nice little tidbits. Also, give yourself a tiny little sentence in there about your personality. I play guitar, I like dinosaurs, I'm enthusiastic about the outdoors, and I can't wait to help you. Of course, keep these things upbeat. Remember that you're trying to sell yourself as an individual, someone that they might want to work with. And this is always a good starting point. After that comes the final piece of information that I encourage you to set together. And that would be what you might consider uh, like a cover letter. And this is a really simple little written piece of publication that duplicates basically all the info that we just covered a basic synopsis of what your LinkedIn profile might contain, um, simple work experiences, business card level detail, really shouldn't be more than a single page. The whole point behind it is that when you contact a client or you have someone new who you're trying to do business with, this is a nice little media package that you can send. Think of it as a nice little attachment that when you first contact them in the emails, you can send along like, hey, by the way, here's my email, here's a little cover letter that's about me, and of course you can find more info about me out here on this website. Try not to keep it too sales pitchy. Remember the whole goal here is just to make it easy for them to contact you. Remember who you are and what sort of things you can do to help them out. Beyond that comes the more active searching part. Now that you've got the information ready to start exchanging, you can begin going out and actually either running ads or looking for ads for other gigs that are out there. Now, this sort of process is gonna be very dependent on the region that you're in and the type of technology work that you do. For me, a lot of my work, I prefer to keep it local as much as possible because I also had a nice person to person relationship there. But let's face it, depending on the way that things are working for you, you might be working online as well. So I would always start first by considering regional ad listing locations. If you're in the United States, Craigslist is available in most metropolitan areas. You can run a simple informative ad that says information technology services, consulting available. Consider the nature of the ad that you're offering. They're often having things like free consult or let's chalk and see how I can help you. Simple ways of saying that you wanna help discover problems for them and that you're a diverse types of individual who can help dip into a variety of different types of technologies. Keep in mind here, friends, don't sell yourself too far down the line here. Try to remember what your strengths are. Focus on those first. And keep in mind that part of the goal here isn't necessarily trying to find the home run job. Instead, you're trying to find augmentations to the work that you do already, or a chance to diversify the types of clients or the types of industries that you might work within. This sort of diversification has been something that's helped me out a whole bunch throughout my career. So the next part of it then is actively searching on Craigslist or on regional newspapers or news medias that run ads or job listing types of opportunities, looking for other gigs where people might be uh, offering opportunities. I often look for things like information technology, help desk, compute, uh, small business network, um, automation setups. They might be talking about business productivity. So spend some time reading through ads in your area. You'll quickly get a feel for the types of businesses that are there and the types of problems that they might be trying to solve. Once you have a good feeling for that, go back and refine some of the other pieces that you might have put into your services. In fact, you might even try to do some of this before you completely commit to getting your business cards printed. And of course, the website or the LinkedIn profile can easily be edited later on and updated a little bit Remember, keep it simple, but updated to kind of reflect the things that you're finding within the job market. Beyond that, there's a lot of formal gig listing sites that are out there like uh, Upwork, Freelance. Uh, another one I just looked at earlier on was People for Hire. Keep in mind that these gig based sites, they do have an exchange process that's a part of it. Typically you have to apply and submit some information. Good thing we just talked about having all that info ready. <laughs> so you can upload some of that activity and be clear about what your objectives are. Mention the work that you might be doing or the schooling that you're currently attending and present yourself accurately to them so that they understand the nature of what you can provide. Beyond that, the gig sites, they're a good opportunity, but make sure you understand what sort of contractual pieces you might be getting yourself into. Often in exchange for working with clients, you may be paying and receiving funds through those sites where they get paid as well. So make sure you read the fine print. 
With that in mind, this is typically why I prefer to go with things like Craigslist, things that I can manage directly. And then also keep in mind too, that if you do happen to find a client on any of those gig sites, consider being able to spin off and work with them directly at some point and mention that to them as a part of the initial interview, which we'll talk about more uh, in future videos. Finally, the last thing is to consider there are big providers out there like Monster, LinkedIn, hiring services as well. Um, just give a Google online for employee hiring or gig opportunities, and you're gonna find a lot of options that are out there. Cruising through those sites may be a good opportunity. Again, be careful of any contractual obligations you might find yourself under. And of course, make sure that as you go through, look and learn as you're going through this process. One of the best ways to get IT jobs is to go and look for IT jobs and begin understanding what sort of work is to be done out there. And also what sort of certifications or requirements might be listed. Years of experience, types of services and technical uh, systems that they might expect you to know. And of course, use all of that to help build ammunition for where to go and look next and what sort of effort to apply leverage wise for career training as well. Which brings us all down uh, to the final second half of it. So you've got your information, you're out there, you're making yourself visible through the search process, and you're searching through these various outlets that I've talked about. And then the final one, possibly the most important one, and the one that has landed me the most lucrative and the most um, probably enjoyable gigs that I've had over the years, personal networking. Okay, now you'll hear people talk about networking all the time, but it really does make the world go around. What you need to consider is that somewhere within your circle right now, there could be a client you could be working with, or someone in your circle knows someone who might be able to take advantage of the services that you have to offer. So this means consider everyone a possible client, and of course, consider the places that you shop and uh, work as well. I'm a big regional supporter. Anytime that I go into a business, I look at their point of sale systems, I look at their phone systems, I consider what sort of technology is at work within this business. They might have Muzak systems, most coffees, uh, shops, <laughs> most local restaurants, most local small businesses have internet needs, Wi-Fi needs, guest services needs that they have to meet there. And of course, a lot of these folks are offering working with other IT teams as well, which brings me to another chance. When I go into a business and I say, hey, who provides your Wi-Fi here? Do you guys do that yourself? Uh, somebody else providing those services? They might say, oh, hey, so-and-so Saturn Network's over here. Uh, they're doing that job for me. And here's the business card of the person who runs that. Boom, that is networking at work. Now you're not necessarily working for the business you talk to, but you're finding out who they're getting their IT services from. And you can contact those folks and say, hey, I'm a student, I'm working in this other industry, I'm looking to pick up some side work. Is there any flex stuff that you need help with? I've picked up lots of gigs finding other small regional IT shops over the years who need help doing large deployments. It's not the most exciting work for me at the time, but I was able to pick up some extra cash on the side, going out, uh, installing desktops and things for people in the evenings after other jobs that I had already done working regular salary gigs. And it gave me a chance to not only understand what other networks are doing, but understand the business logic of running small IT shops as well. They have a unique set of requirements in the tools that they use to manage those systems are often cloud-based, they're often very network-oriented, and it's a great chance to diversify the types of tools you work with and the types of experience you have. Remember, side gigs can make you money, but they can also earn you a lot of really critical insights and experience, and that's part of the double-edged sword of working with side gigs like this. So remember, stay excited, <laughs> stick with me here, and remember, use that information and keep refining it over time because how other companies present themselves can help you understand how to best present yourself. And of course, as you're going around working with these organizations, keep in mind the concept of free training and consultation. The chance to sit down with someone who's savvy about technical arenas here is often one of the biggest benefits of hiring outside consultants. You are now able to, as a business owner or as a manager who has technical problems, talk to someone in an informal fashion and get an understanding of what might be the best path. And guess what? <laughs> it might be hiring you or having you take on some of that work. Now, so we talked about businesses. Remember, friends and coworkers often know other people who might need help, and this brings me up to a good opportunity. You know what people love? People love free help, and they love volunteering. So I really encourage people to consider that the best IT gigs you might find may not come through an IT contact. I found a lot of technology work and gigs on the side by volunteering with interesting things that I love to work in already on the side business venues, or I'm sorry, music venues, business outlets, again, churches and cultural organizations in your area, sports teams, things that your kids are doing, schools, educators, talk to them, ask them, can I volunteer? Do you have any need for me to help around the campus? The point is not necessarily to help them with IT necessarily, but to get in as a volunteer and show them that you're willing to work, that you have the skill set, and then once you're closer to that organization, begin feeling out what the technology uses are that are in place there. So, 
a lot of good opportunities here. Get your info up to shape. Make sure that you're comfortable with some of the search process. And then above all else, remember this final one, network, network, network. One of the last things I would kind of consider here uh, on the networking piece is that if you really are looking to earn some money on the side, rideshare, delivery systems, and other ad hoc gig networks that aren't really tech related necessarily still give you a chance to cut through a wide diverse range of people in your community and in your area. I know a lot of people who have found their next software development gigs or IT jobs driving Uber <laughs> or driving for Lyft because they kept their info handy, they had their cards and their contact info ready, and they struck up some conversations with a few of the passengers. Now be careful here, <laughs> they don't always want you talking to everybody there, but driving people back and forth to airports, you find a lot of interesting people in a lot of walks of life who probably have technical problems that you could maybe help them out with. Talk to them, find out what it means to work in their industry and the technical problems that they have there. All of this is really important learning information for you that can help you become a better employee for your whatever you're doing currently tech-wise. And of course, land new side gigs. And above all else, possibly most importantly, gain more experience and a better understanding of how to market yourself in the IT space. And hey, as you do this with more and more clients, you keep building up that expertise and keep changing your information up so that it reflects the new processes you've gone through. One of the final things to keep in mind here is the magic words of saying free consult. <laughs> Let's talk about it. And then recognizing too that you're talking about contract-based employment. People know that you're not necessarily trying to work full-time or looking for a job per se. Just let them know that you have something to offer uh, and a chance to kind of help them out. One of the last things I mentioned on there as well is, of course, everybody. Talk to everyone. Anyone that you run into, of course, don't be too crazy about it, <laughs> but stay excited. Be a person who gives a chance to practice talking about these technical services and looking for ways to help them out. So in the end, friends, I hope this helps you land some client gigs. And this is just the first part of my self-employed side gigs pieces here um, that hopefully you can find informational as well. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give a like or a subscribe down below, share it around with some other folks who might be interested in getting into side gigs. Um, and make sure you tune into future CloudBard episodes where I'm gonna be digging into the process of actually interviewing new clients, making sure that you build that relationship well from the beginning, feel out the most important characteristics of what that business is doing, and make sure that you understand how to write a proposal, which will be another topic that's coming up real soon. So I hope this has been informative, friends. I really had a great time chatting with you today. If you have questions, send me a, uh, a link here. You can find me on Twitter at CloudBart, and of course here on YouTube as well. So stick around, friends. We'll see you in more CloudBart episodes, and we'll see you in the cloud.